Excellent. All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending today. We are delighted to uh, kick off our webinar series with Ali Van Dyke from Georgetown, Texas. You know her from award ceremonies, uh, very quickly becoming one of our favorite customers uh, <laughs> at Flashbook. Done some great surveys already and more, and more to come. Uh, she'll be sh talking today about how to use data, how she's used data to improve government communications, her team, uh, techniques, processes, surveys she's done. And uh, the plan is we'll have about, target about 20 minutes of presentation, might go a tiny bit over, uh, and 10 minutes of questions. So get your questions ready. Please throw them in the chat and uh, we'll be monitoring the chat. And I'll, I'll uh, you know, get those fed out at the end and Allie be able to see them too. But um, uh, that's the plan. With that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Allie. So thank awesome. you very much for joining us yeah. today. Well, thanks to Kevin and Flashboat for having me. Um, I'm glad you guys are here. I hope it's helpful. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your faces when you present one of these two. Um, I love the government community, especially the government communications community. I think we are rock stars and we figure out how to solve really complex problems in really fun, unique ways. So I'm, I hope that these things um, I'm going to share today help you guys, but I am definitely looking forward to learning from you as well. Uh, so I'm going to hop into it. I do speak very quickly. Uh, it's a bug, not a feature. So uh, if you miss something or you have a question, let me know. Um, but I am going to try to go through some stuff pretty quickly. So uh, just really quickly, a bit about me. I am a Kansan native. So Chiefs, we did it. Super Bowl, incredible. Um, I'm a former newspaper reporter. So some of the um, stuff we've implemented is definitely a carryover from that. Uh, I have been working in local government communication since 2015, and I've been in Texas since 2017 when I started with the city of Austin and their central communications office. Uh, I'm going to share some stories about my experience there and how that led to some of the changes we've implemented in Georgetown. I started in Georgetown in January 2020, so um, COVID and then URI and now this most recent winter storm. I think my team thinks I'm the harbinger of doom. <laughs> this has been a crazy few years, but um, the team's really great and I'm excited to talk to you about them. So my contact information's there. Please don't hesitate to fire off an email if there's anything you need. And I'm gonna see if it'll let me go to the next slide. There we go, great. Uh, so this is uh, the top, that's my team. Uh, it's one of our team building things in response to some engagement stuff we did. We had a team photo shoot. This is part of our sig email signatures for internal stuff. So just a, like trying to get our team name and brand out there um, internally at least, very fun. But I'm gonna go through our team, some changes we've implemented, some of our processes, uh, some of our data-driven decisions. That's gonna be kind of sprinkled throughout um, and then we'll take your questions. So let's get into it. Um, so the team here in Georgetown, uh, we are the Communications and Public Engagement Department. So CAPE, we are the superheroes of the city. Everyone on my team has a CAPE with their like own superhero name and their traits. Um, so we do, it's a team of seven, myself included, and five of them report to me. They are organ. We've kind of set up our department to be organized by areas of expertise. So we have public information, social media and marketing, public engagement, and the website. Yes, that's only four. I'm going to get into the other position here in a second. Um, but the goal there is really um, I, something I learned from Austin. They really set up their different divisions in their communication shop on those areas of expertise because eventually that. It is going to become a division. There will be a manager. We really want one of our philosophies is to have communications people reporting to communications people. So if we set up those divisions as areas of expertise, that manager is really going to be able to organize and manage that work a lot better because they understand the work that their teams are going to be doing. Um, so that's really our organizational chart. And then I just talked about one of our philosophies, communications professionals, report to communications professionals, and it should be a central communications office rather than really disjointed and having departments have um, their own communication stuff. And I'll get into that as well. The first philosophy, though, is that resource requests should be data driven. Um, that's definitely something that's working here in Georgetown. I think it's something that governments, if they haven't already, they are transitioning to. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the metrics we track and how we use those to advocate for resources. Okay, so uh, our first philosophy on um, 
making data driven resource requests. Um, so we are constantly analyze, analyzing data to decide what we need and how to advocate for it. So most recently, we successfully added a new social media and marketing person. We use the metrics that we track weekly and monthly to make the case. So we look through our social media metrics. One of those is the number of posts. Uh, 2,500 in <laughs> FY22, um, the combined reach of all of our posts on our platforms, which was 6.1 million, and engagement benchmarking, uh, which we have for Facebook and Twitter. I'm happy to share those too. Uh, that they're in the slide, actually. Um, got those online. And then uh, when I worked for Austin, I took their benchmarking too, because they had it. And that's not really something that we really have as government social media managers is that like benchmarking engagement rate. So that's what we use. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, we just, um, we also track, one of our other things we track is campaigns. So anything that requires three or more deliverables from us, that could be a Facebook post and a Twitter post, they're different, right? A graphic, a map, a website, anything like that. Um, we count those as campaigns and that really helps the manager's office understand our workload. Uh, we did 320 last year and I think we already are looking at 400 this year. So it's um, it's a lot. And then we also look at public engagement results, right? Uh, we run a lot of those surveys and the surveys tell the communication shop something too. So um, when we did public engagement in FY22, we saw that transportation was a major concern and interest of our residents. So we learned we were busy, we were effective and we needed help to keep it up. So uh, when we advocated for that resource, we kind of did a bait and switch. So we learned we needed a dedicated transportation CIP staff member. Hiring someone with that level of expertise and interest was going to be pretty costly, but someone on our team wants that job. So we said, this is what we really need, but we can have that person do it and hire someone to take off some of his work. Um, so we can maybe get someone like right out of college a little bit cheaper um, and doing doing work that we really need so we can get it done. So um, yeah, so we advocated hiring a social media marketing person to report to like starting that, divi that division, right? Of social media marketing. Um, and they went for it. Our position should be posting here in the next couple of months. So if you know anybody you're interested, I'd love you come join the team in Georgetown, um, but really just helping us continue to hit these benchmarks and surpass them. So the same general thing happened with the position we added last year. There's a website content specialist and why we don't have a graphic designer. Um, we have one on retainer rather than a full-time staffer. We looked at our workload and the skills that we had and what our attention was being diverted to and use those to identify gaps and then advocate for resources. So the best I can, advice I can give you on this one is spend a lot of time and having a lot of conversations with your staff and management about metrics. Um, I think workload metrics are almost as important as the efficacy ones so that we can really show people what all we're doing, help them understand the <laughs> all of the stuff we're doing um, so that you can advocate for the resources that you need. So that's that one. Oh, stay on the stream. Okay, so the second philosophy, communications positions, having communications managers. Um, I've worked in a, a lot, I've worked in three cities, right? And I've collaborated with more. And one constant is that departments are continually wanting to build their own communications teams separate from a central communications department. Um, so I saw this in action at the city of Austin. Every department has its own communication shop that reported internally to that department. Sometimes they had bigger teams than the central communications office itself, which was supposed to be responsible for the whole city, right? So that means each department division program had their own communications channels, their own brand, their own voice. Um, why is that bad? A few, a few reasons. Um, Degradation of trust and identity is one. The city of Austin offers a lot of great programs, but I doubt many folks know the city is behind it because it's not connected to their central branding um, or their central identity. Um, starting a new social media account or a new brand for a program is like starting a new business. It's a huge lift that starts from scratch. Every time something changes, it has to change everywhere all at once. I just watched that movie, it's really good. Um, but I think like a social media policy. Um, it's just a huge lift. So uh, dis this one actually recently came up, a disjointed response during emergencies. We know internally maybe which department is lead, but residents don't. Um, so having emergency communications go out on separate channels with them managing their own communications is really, it's a lot of work and it's not as effective um, for the residents. So that's another reason. Exponentially increased costs. So if every department 
has its own comm shop. They have to pay for archiving, any social listening, any of their marketing, in addition to all the like staffing, the other resources It's just really incredibly expensive. Um, and then wasted time, right? Department staff over the communications will have fo like they'll have folks spend hours on a video that has a shelf life of two hours, or have them spend months putting a printed book together that collects dust and it's only relevant for like a year at a time, right? So the communications person often doesn't have the authority to push back on that direction, and they end up just doing what they're told to do rather than what's strategic and appropriate. So um, the central communication shop in Austin did try to coordinate all of those cats. Um, it's just impossible. So the philosophy here in Georgetown, like I said, communications professionals should report to communications professionals and it should be in a central communications office. Communications has now become a sound, not a word. I've said it so many times, but um, so central communications office has the benefit of seeing the big picture. And when all of the communications were professionals report through one chain of command. You have a unified voice, a unified message, and resource advocacy makes it a lot simpler. You can truly understand the gaps in what you need if you're all going through the same shop. Um, the exciting thing here in Georgetown is the city manager's office understands that model and supports it. So they know when they see a department asking for a communications professional that they're going to use the model that we set up here, which is my fifth direct report. Um, so we actually, this we just tried this for the first time last year. Um, but I've only been here three years, so I think that's pretty good. Um, so we we actually have a dedicated communications position in the water department, paid for by the water department, offices out at the water department, but they report to me. So water is a huge issue every summer. If you're in the central Texas area, you know this. Um, I saw the drain two summers in a row that running water conservation campaigning took on my team. We couldn't do anything else and it was too important not to do year round. So met with the city manager, proposed this um, model. And then when water asked for the communications person to report to them too, they saw the need as well. CMO was like, yes, and you're gonna pay for it. It's gonna report to the um, central communications shop. So we meet weekly with the conservation manager and that um, employee to talk through workload and it has already helped um, the total reach during last summer's peak demand season was over 2 million just on that campaign, just over a few months. We already have a plan and editorial content for this year, right? It's February, but we're like ready to go because we have someone dedicated to it. And uh, the efforts have been recognized by our city manager's office, council, and even some professional organizations. So we really are able to um, direct that effort and make it strategic instead of, yeah, like a, a four hour long video that no one's going to watch. Okay, great. Those are our philosophies here in Georgetown. So some changes um, that we've made, I'm gonna speak specifically to social media um, on some of the like tracking and standards that we use here. So before I started, we didn't really have a clear voice. We didn't post pictures or graphics with our posts. We tracked followers as one of our metrics, which we know is an issue with all the bots and stuff, right? Um, and most importantly, we had one person trying to manage all of our accounts and our comments and was in charge of all of our advertising and marketing. So um, it, when I was in Austin, we actually worked on a pilot project for social media because we saw it as an emerging trend and something we really um, needed to understand a little bit better so that we could be more effective. So um, we, through this pilot project, we had dedicated rotating social media responsibilities. We did editorial planning every week and we tracked metrics every week. So we looked at engagements, reactions on every post individually, and then talked about how we could change that content um, to see if it's a trend or if it was just a one-off anom anom anomaly, anom anemone, okay, anomaly, I got it. <laughs> okay, so through that pilot in Austin, we came uh, to a better understanding of social media algorithms and what our audience audiences responded to and what resources were needed to be more effective on social media. They have hired a social media manager um, as a result of that pilot. Um, one of the philosophy, I keep using that word philosophy, but one of the philosophies we came up with as a result of that pilot was thinking about your followers as your children uh, and you're trying to give them a balanced diet of meat, veggie, meat and veggies, right? Um, but if you think about like meat as the emergency management, hey, a storm's coming, hey, we're in the middle of a storm, like they're gonna eat the meat or, you know, tofu, whatever you want. Uh, they're gonna eat that, no problem. Um, but what a lot of communications shops end up focusing on are the veggies. Like come to this public meeting or take this survey, right? And like, just not everybody is gonna engage with that content because it's just not very engaging. But that's what we're feeding them. We're just giving them a bunch of vegetables. Well, what our kids want, right, is candy. 
Um, the candy is the like gifts, the memes, the like funny posts that get a lot of engagement. And um, when you post stuff like that, when those posts, I think everyone, most people on here probably know that, but when you post content that gets a lot of engagement, it boosts all of your other posts in the algorithm. So we realized we really needed to, it, sounds, it seems silly, right, to post gifts and stuff, but we really needed to focus time on developing that fun content. So it would boost the rest of our stuff and get them to maybe eat a veggie or two that we really want them <laughs> to pay attention to. So that's some of the stuff that came out of um, the pilot in Austin. And um, the I brought that to Georgetown because it, because it worked, right? Like we saw a change, we advocated for positions. So um, here in Georgetown, we track metrics weekly and monthly on social media. So engagements, engagement rates, we have those benchmarks I mentioned. And then we talk through recommendations on what we're learning. So one of the things we learned was our threads on Twitter. We were like, oh, let's just break it up. It's a Facebook post, let's break it up into threads and that way we don't have to rewrite it, right? Wrong, because our, our analytics showed us that people just didn't pay attention to what was going on later in the thread. So now we know you have to write specifically to Twitter, the 250 character limit, and who knows what's gonna happen. I don't, who knows, who knows? Um, and then uh, the other thing we came up with too, we do outreach and after action reports just around emergencies. Um, and then we implement changes for the next emergency. So like the big one we learned during URI was telling folks when the next planned update would be. Um, in Georgetown, we have a meeting in the morning and in the afternoon during emergencies. And so that's how we did our like planned updates. And I think that really helped. We get thanked now during emergencies for our communications and got some nice comments during council yesterday too for the most recent one. So um, as a result of all this, uh, we now get impressions on one Facebook post that we would maybe get in a week. So all of these changes um, are already resulting in a lot better engagement with our stuff. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go through some processes that we have here. I have all of the documentation stuff if you guys wanna learn more about our processes here internally, um, but this is when it comes to like requesting our services. So uh, before I started and actually why my position was created, we had a communications assessment um, done. And one of the, some of the stuff they found was, you know, communications is an afterthought. If they call us in, it's when it's already too late for us to make a difference. We didn't really have enough resources and we didn't really have a way to um, like intake requests and be more organized. So we learned we needed to get organized to develop a simple work request process and to track meaningful metrics so we could better manage expectations, prioritize our work and advocate for resources. So I don't have great statistics about what it was like before I got here um, because requests mainly came through email. Um, but just talking with folks who've been here um, before I got here and, and now all the stuff that we had, they are noticing a positive change. So um, now what we do for organization, we use Trello, Hope it's a free service. Um, we create a board for every calendar year and then a row column, a column for every month. And every everything we do is a card in Trello. Uh, we use labels, um, but yeah, it, everything with this. So we'd have a weekly meeting with the whole team where we talk through what's coming up this week, what's coming up next week, ongoing campaigns. This is where we track all of our work. Um, and like I said, the campaigns is a really important metric for us when it comes to advocating for more resources. And then the other thing we did to kind of get organized and try to be more front of mind with our coworkers is we have quarterly meetings with all departments to figure out what is on their docket. So we have a little bit more heads up on what's going on. We also have a pretty robust intake process that's been developed over the last uh, few years. Uh, the first thing they do is we have a, a short form they fill out on our customer service portal. So it's like by the help, help desk for IT. So like it's front and center for folks. Uh, it comes to me, I try to figure out the ask, assign it to a team member. When I respond to the person who asked, the department that asked for it, I include one of our bio sheets so that they have an understanding of the level of um, expertise they're getting on their project. That was something that our team really wanted to focus and tell our story a little bit more. Um, then uh, we go through a client questionnaire that has a lot more in-depth questions that we need to know. Then we build out a strategic communications plan that gets authorized. That includes like messaging. How do we measure success? Is there after action reporting? Who all needs to approve it? That kind of stuff. Um, and we do that. And then we start developing content. And the other thing we do now is um, after action reports or outreach reports where we just, it, 
I have different templates. It could just be like a one pager or like a full on report, but really just to reiterate the fact that, you know, we are a professional organization, not just everybody can do this. And you asked us to do this work. So we're showing you what we did. Okay, boom, last, last part, go, go, go. Okay, um, so to our flash vote surveys, uh, we actually just closed our third one um, last week. It was about our unified development code. But the other two we did, um, the first one was a 311-like service. We really wanted to know how residents wanted to report issues to us. Um, it's really helpful. We are using that feedback to build out this service for residents. So it is referenced in council presentations. It's referenced whenever we're writing RFPs. We really want to have a service that is informed by what the residents want rather than what we think they want. Um, the other one is a communication survey. Um, we did it. It was really for my team. It was how do you get city news, basically. Um, so we learned a few things. The first one was that uh, folks really rely on the monthly newspaper that's delivered to their mailboxes. So maintaining good relationships with Community Impact Georgetown uh, is one of them. Another one is that no one really knew about our utility bill insert or our award-winning weekly electronic newsletter. And we spend a ton of time on that content. So uh, we got together as a team, brainstormed how we could like get those in front of people a little bit more. Um, we decided for the weekly, we were gonna put some it's $25 behind our weekly posts on Facebook just to get that out a little bit more. Um, and already, so uh, already we've added 246 new subscriptions and we just started doing that this month. Um, so that was December to January. And we averaged like less than 100 subscriptions a month before that. So we're already seeing a benefit to that. And the other for our reporter, we send it, but we don't really talk about it on social media, which is one of our main channels. So um, we started posting it on Facebook. And since we started doing that in January, um, we had 474 website views to the reporter page in January compared to 139 in December. So we're already making a difference. We're tracking these. We're going to track it for the next six months and see if we need to keep doing it or if something needs to change. Um, but that's really how we're using data here in Georgetown to build our communications. That's it questions got six minutes did it okay you you nailed the timing on that so well <laughs> like with the two or three minute start that we we got off with um thank you that was that was really i mean that was that was a lot of information in a short period of time i love the yeah. bio example by the way where did that come from like the because there is that like oh you just you, what are you just playing on social media right you've gotten that before yeah. no that's not actually what we're doing we're scientifically trying to figure out how to get information uh, out to people and in their heads you know? yeah yeah so, yeah Parts and we'll look at some questions yeah, sure. Um, so we uh, we actually do an employee engagement survey here in Georgetown, and it was a discussion we worked through with my team when we were looking at those results. And one of the issues we found was that our opinions don't seem to count. So how can we get our our opinions to count? It just kind of led to this whole conversation about we haven't told our story as CAPE internally. Um, we say that we're the subject matter experts for communications and public engagement, but we haven't really shown them how we are. So one of the things we wanted to do was, yeah, write bios. We did a fun photo shoot. It's a really actually a cool team building thing. Um, and so all those bios are on our intranet. And then, like I said, that image at the front, that's part of our internal signature that links them to our intranet. Um, but it's just keeping people, yeah, keeping our faces in front of them so they don't forget about us. Faces um, yeah, are nice. Those photos are fun too. Yeah, like we had that. a good time. The little background, right? Is that all? Yeah. pretty much all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. Yeah, it's just different lights. Mm -hmm. So we got some. Uh, we have some questions coming in here. Uh, Fire away. Um, how are you getting this info? Is the first question. Kind of a general question, but maybe you can start with that one. What oh, and, and then there's a follow up. Yeah, rounding with department heads um, is kind of a question mark after that. But yeah, talk about how you get the info that you get, if you could. The information from departments about what they want us to do. Yeah, it, yeah. How do they? How does that work? And then, um, and then the data too that you that you get maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. So so yeah. So we do meet quarterly with every department to go through their what their needs and stuff. Um, and then we have the intake form, which isn't used perfectly. Um, but in those quarterly marketing meetings, we reassert like, hey, we okay, thank you for telling this work comes up. We're not going to start working on it until you do the intake form. Like we need to know these mm. this basic information. Um, so that's 
yeah, I mean, but yeah, people will still email or just come by my office and say, oh, hey, did you know we're upgrading our phone system? No. <laughs> yeah, but, that, I mean, I that's mean, interesting, right? That's sort of how do you get the data, but really how do you get them to give you the data? Yes. How do you get them to fill out the intake form? Nice. Okay. Yes. Well, one of the, our intake form was super long and complicated and asked them to like identify a bunch of stuff. Um, so we pared it down and made it a lot more simple. We still asked them, you know, what kind of communications were you thinking? So we kind of understand their expectations, but at the end of the day, the strategy is ours to decide. So that's one of the, like, hmm. you, we know you want a video, but do you yeah, really what's one? it going to do what's the yeah. purpose right what's the goal yeah. back up but zoom out a level like we like to do with our surveys yeah, yeah exactly um, yeah. but so here's the, okay. go ahead sorry no you were saying you want to know the other data we get um, oh yeah so so our metrics i'm happy to send all the metrics that we track it's not just social media um we track like news releases web edits public engagements opportunities public engagement contacts campaigns all that stuff um, so it comes from a variety of sources, but for social, most of the stuff we get, we use Sprout Social for our mm -hmm. tracking. So they have a really great reporting thing. So that's where we pull great. that from. All right. So here's another kind of paired question. How are you funded and any chargeback to departments for your work? You know, breaking silos, question mark also. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, so we are funded in the general fund. We just did a cost allocation study. So I think that means some of our funding now comes from the different utility like different revenue sources but we are in the general fund so we that's yeah it's hard uh we do have peg money for our like you know tv station but we can't use that on oh, any right. of the fun stuff that we need it for so yeah um that is your how public access have. money in texas right yeah other states have a similar program yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then breaking cool. down silos is another one right yeah. Um, What's your strategy there? What has it been? Yeah, uh, it's a few things. So the quarterly marketing meetings are a big, a big lift there. Um, as a director, I try to meet with the directors pretty regularly. Like we just had a Galentine's Day brunch with the lady directors on Monday. Happy Galentine's <laughs> to any of those gals out there. Um, and then, so we do have some departments that have their own communication staff. It's usually a staff of one. Um, and we meet with them monthly. Kevin's actually present. So we go through kind of big, like this is this is what's happening citywide. We do a round robin and we try to have offer a training at every single one of those mm. so that they are leaving with a new skill or a new understanding of our standards. Um, so Kevin actually presented one on public engagement to this group so that they could all get on That's the same right. page for why public engagement is important and not just a survey. And not, not asking you for bad data, which is a waste yes. of your time, right? Yeah. Yes. So, okay. A couple more minutes, a couple more questions. Looks like uh, anyone else use Trello so you can see it is the question. Um. Oh, other departments. Is it just your department maybe, yeah. Some of them do. I think our customer care, like our call center uses them for um, like questions and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I think our parks department might too. I think we, I actually presented to the communications group about how we use Trello just to get organized. And I think other comms, folks have adopted it to try to plan out and stay organized. But no, I don't okay. see them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, here's another one. Do you respond to all social media posts and does each department have its own accounts? There's a classic. <laughs> uh, so our rule on comments is if it's asked in good faith, if they're asking just to be a jerk, we aren't gonna engage with that. But if there is a like, question in there that's been like we've heard before or we don't feel like we've answered we do try to answer it we try to answer it in one rather than getting into a back and forth um so if they ask a follow-up question either you know if it's in good faith like hey maybe you want to email us or direct message us um and then uh so there are Yes, there are some like the part, there are some departments, they have their own communications folks, they have their own comms channels, we are trying Still, to, yeah. yeah, that's, that's predates me, but we are, we are trying mm -hmm. to use that model going forward. Um, because like I said, creating a new social media channel is like starting a new business and ain't nobody got time for that. We already have yeah. award winning channels. So, you know, with, with a following, so like take advantage, take advantage of that. Let's, let's, um, yeah. put that content on our page where you don't have to start from scratch. Nice. Do you have a request for a link to that form that you were talking about? So we'll, we can take care of that afterwards. We can send that out to folks. Sure. Our, our intake that. form. Mm -hmm. Our intake form. Yeah. And then, yeah. um. 
Yeah, yeah let me see. Do you see? You see, PEG and communications department says the same, have two different responsibilities, but we do both with two people. Does that look odd to the public? Just a question there. Say that, say that at the beginning of it one more time. Yeah, sorry. So uh, do you respond to all oh. social media? Sorry, no, that, 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 hold on. Do you see on. PEG and communication? Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. that one. Do you see PEG and communication department as the same? They have two different responsibilities, but we do both with two people. Does that look odd to the public? I don't think so. The public the access channel. Um, I don't think so, especially, you know, with the like, communication should respond report to communications and be in the central office if you have a video like our videographer helps with that and it too but um i would say the more the more you can consolidate communications into your central shop the better so if your group if yeah if it's going to be broadcast on a channel it's probably content you want to be making with your mm -hmm. shop with your videographer so yeah I don't think it looks weird. Like I don't sense. know that a lot of public knows what PEG is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. I uh, didn't. Not a huge channel, yeah. It turns out for the, for the folks today. Channel 10. So, uh, last question it looks like Will this presentation and recording be made available to attendees? Uh, the answer is uh, yes, there is a recording. And um, are you uh, happy to share your PDFs here, Allie? Yeah. Include yeah. those? You want to send yeah. them out to people? Great. Absolutely. Excellent. Sure. Um, all right. Well, that's our half hour. Thanks for the two minute start. Thanks to everyone yeah. for coming. Any other questions? I, uh, you know, put, put them in the chat now if you'd like. We can answer them later, or you can email them. Uh, you can also send them to me, Kevin at flashvote.com. You have Allie's information up there, I believe. So, yeah. thanks again to everyone for attending. Look forward to the next one. Let us know what you thought. Let's uh, thank Allie. Clap, <laughs> throw it in the chat. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Nice Thanks for your time. Uh, showing up there. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thanks, Great everybody. Thanks Looking so forward to yours. A lot of good stuff in there. Yes. Um, so, yeah, if you have any ideas for a future topic besides the Steve O story, uh, <laughs> then I think, uh, we're excited for the, for the next opportunity to, to meet with people and, and share some tips. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, Thanks great. for your time. Thank you so much, Allie. We'll, uh, Talk to you later.